So, as good as that was, we need to find out what K is to know exactly what the phase speed is in air. Um, well, define, not go back to where the step we first define it. We know we define K to be the derivative of pressure over density at some initial pressure. Now, for your relationship between pressure and density, we have to consider what kind of expansion we're dealing with. Thinking back in your thermo, in our case, we have an adiabatic expansion and compression of the gas because we're not really changing the energy of this packet as the wave moves along. So the governing equation there is P times V raised to some power should be a constant. And for air, this gamma, the adiabatic constant, is 7 fifths. You may have seen this before in your thermal course or even your stack mat course. But with this, because we know our mass divided by volume is our density, we can swap this to the other side to say that pressure is equal to mass gamma times C over uh, times rho to the same gamma. And this, of course, is just another constant because mass is going to stay the same. So if we take the derivative, that's going to give us C rho gamma minus 1 times gamma power rule. And of course, then, this part we can re-express as P over density times gamma to give us k. And so we can then work out for air, the phase velocity is given by the square root of the air pressure times this 7 fifth constant divided by the density of air. If you plug numbers in, your typical density is 1.2 kilograms per meters cube, and your pressure is of course 1.01 .01 times 5 Pascal, giving you a V of 343 meters per second, which is very, very close to the experimental value. Interestingly enough, this whole argument we've done for air also applies to when you're dealing with liquid, we can talk about the speed of sound in the liquid as well. The only difference here is that unlike air, water doesn't squish, it doesn't compress as easily. So we end up with a different relationship between our pressure and density and therefore a slightly different K and so our phase velocity is defined by a different thing. So this is for our liquid and we define this bulk modulus here. And this bulk modulus is defined to be the negative volume di p di v. And that is something we can actually look up for different condition and different liquid. And this is the speed of sound in liquid. And also in a solid, the other difference there is as a solid, when you squish from the two sides, the middle part is going to bulge out a little bit, but the things on the side are going to press it back in. So it's going to be a little harder for it to press outwards. So we have an additional 1.5, roughly 1.5 factor in the bulk modulus and that's the speed of sound in a solid.
and there you have it. You have this, the ways to calculate the speed of sound in air, in liquid, and in solid. And it's all based on the same kind of argument that we've used so far.